Good evening. I'm John Bailey. This is People to Be Heard, the program where people who have something to say have their say. And tonight, we're doing something a little different on People to Be Heard. We're going to take you back to early January, early January last month, when there was a big controversy over holding a gun show in Westchester County. Uh, the county executive, Robert Astorino, decided to hold a gun show. He made the decision very, um, very quickly before the show. And um, the Westchester County Legislature, outraged that uh, a gun show would be uh, held on county property, since one had not been held on county property since 2014, and there had been a recent uh, shooting in the country that everybody was aghast at, they voted to ban gun shows on county property. However, the county executive, just about a day before the show, vetoed that measure, and the um, legislature could n did not have the votes to override it. Uh, the county executive uh, traveled to the gun show when it opened on Saturday, and he held a press conference, and he made and said he made the decision based on his belief in the law and that the belief that having a gun show at a county-owned facility such as the Westchester County Center made such a show a venue that presented greater control of security and execution of the legal procedures required at gun shows across the state. Mr. Astorino strolled about the show prior to the conference getting Congratulations for his veto from vendors and showgoers alike. During the news conference, persons waiting in the long line to get into the show, a line, by the way, that snaked all the way around the county center and up the Bronx River Parkway by its side, waiting sometimes as much as an hour to get into the show, they shouted, thank you, Rob, and thanks, Rob, as they strolled slowly by the developing news conference. I was told by Peter Tartaglia, the Commissioner of Recreation and Parks for Westchester County, that over 3,000 persons had passed through the turnstiles paying $13 a head as of 2 p.m. And on Sunday, and almost an equal number of folks showed up, about 8,000, approximately 8,000. Now, this is an all-time record for attendance at the center, of, center event, according to Mr. Astorino. Astorino, in his comments to the press, said persons could not buy a handgun and walk out with it from the four tables this reporter saw selling handguns. All of the handguns and rifles for sale included twist ties in the barrels, on the triggers, and in magazines preventing the guns from being loaded. You could not handle a handgun that was for sale without presenting a pistol license in your name. You could not purchase a rifle or other long gun without a National Instant Criminal Background System check of your identification. That would be conducted, that was conducted on the premises in the manager's office. Asked how long it would take a person to get a gun, gun license, Astorino said there were a number of steps that could take a while, but that no, did not know exactly how long. And County Legislator John Testa said it would take approximately five weeks to be processed. But speaking with a gun licensee familiar with the procedure, found it could it take six months to a year to get the handgun in your possession. Uh, the county legislator Testa said that the success of the event meant the show would become a perennial event at the county center. The county legislature tried to pass a law requiring various procedures at all gun shows. However, it was determined by WPCR, your reporter right here, that those procedures were all, all already in effect. So there's nothing new here that the legislature was trying to uh, 
pass. As it turned out, the veto held, and the legislature now is looking forward to possibly getting some Republicans to cross over and uh, vote a ban later this year on gun shows, but we'll see if that happens. Uh, now, when I went to the gun show, I had never been to one, or I might have years ago, but it had been a long time. So what I did was I went to the gun show, I lingered, and I got to tell you, I was really impressed by the uh, show. Uh, I was impressed by the crowds, and uh, I also was able to secure an interview um, with um, Newman Chittenden, who is the resident and CEO, CEO of Westchester uh, collections, the uh, organization which has been running the Westchester Gun Show, and also they run um, uh, gun shows all over New York State, New England and Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and um, we interviewed him uh, the Sunday morning, the second day of the show, and here is our videotape of that interview with Newman Chittenden. Here it is. Good evening. I'm John Bailey. This is People Will Be Heard, the program where people who have something to say have their say. Tonight, you've got Newman Titterton, president of Westchester Collectors, who is staging the gun show previously here at uh, the Westchester County Center. First, welcome to the program. Thank you, Newman. And, uh, we're conducting a conversation the second day of the 2017 Gun and Knife Show at the County Center, where a record was set yesterday in number of issues, uh, 4,051. So how, how does this compare to the typical gun show no, the stage around New York? This particular show has been uh, uh, an extremely exciting show for us. It's been uh, uh, something that pleases us a great deal to see this kind of turnout and enthusiasm. And it's uh, certainly a larger turnout than we've had in New York State. Uh, the only other uh, show we do right now is the Middletown, Orange County Fairgrounds in Middletown. So we're really pleased with the turnout. Okay. And uh, how does this compare to the typical gun show you stage around New York, Pennsylvania? Good morning, Mayor. Thank you for attending this This particular day. show's turnout has been significantly Did larger than the other shows that we've run in New York, which would be in Orange County Fairgrounds. Other parts of the country uh, have had large turnouts, but this one did How did you uh, get into the uh, uh, collector and gun and show for this? Well, to begin with, uh, I've been a shooter since I was 14 years old, and um, I met up with uh, Martin Fassett, who was the co-owner of Westchester Collectors, and uh, we decided to have a show here at the County Center uh, 32 years ago. And so uh, since then, we've been doing shows and mostly in the northeast uh, of um, the country, and we've been, uh, been very happy to have it, be able to do that. And who is the audience for a gun show? Can well, you, you know, the typical, typical customers, or typically customers uh, that come to our show are older men. Uh, this is a man's thing, more or less. However, if you notice, um, if you were to notice the people coming in over time, you will notice that much more female coming in today where um, women are concerned about their personal safety and they're going into self-defense firearms. What kind of vendor mix and product mix is a wanted today? Well, the people want to see a lot of the firearms. They want uh, a lot of people are interested in new, uh, interested in handguns particularly and um, the uh, military replica rifles that uh, we have in New York that we now restricted uh, in, in selling, but in any case, uh, they're more interested in new. There are people who are collectors of old guns, and we've got that too. So, what kind, what uh, kind of guns can the enthusiast buy and not buy and properly then purchase? In New York State, there's restrictions on certain rifles that uh, people call the black guns, etc. And um, in New York State, you um, cannot buy certain ones that have certain features. So we have ones that are some, somewhat similar but uh, and pass the scrutiny of New York State law. And what's more, we do have some very nice old guns and some very nice antiques um, that are available. And a lot of paraphernalia that... Uh, we, we have a great deal of other things that go with that, such as holsters, optics, ammunition, um, targets, all kinds of various things. 
Now, what guns can be bought at, the sh at a show in New York State without a gun license and just a NICS background check? Well, the uh, NICS background check is done by um, uh, this, our dealers at our shows. For all of firearms that are built after 1898, and those that cannot be bought are ones that are restricted by the state of New York. And those are certain long guns. In the case of handguns, one must have a uh, pistol license. In the case of long guns, one is not required, but to have to have the uh, background check in any case. Um, are there any gun that makes, that makes you prohibited from selling, or that you as the manager exclude? I don't exclude anything that's legal. I see, okay. Fine, so quite a selection of guns. What other merchandise and products are sold? Well, you, you certainly see a lot of um, things like holsters, <coughs> targets, ammunition, uh, optics, optical sights for people who hunt or, or shoot target, and just a kind of a, a, a bunch of things that uh, are related. For instance, some people like to shoot air guns. <coughs> we have some air guns here, uh, a great thing to shoot, uh, not, not expensive. And, uh, much safer. Okay, now, uh, I noticed only about four tables actually sold here. And uh, is that down from previous years? No, I think um, the amount of handguns being sold today at the show is not really down. There are other shows occurring on this weekend, which would take some of our dealers away, so we may have lost a few dealers to a show here and there in New York State, and also uh, it's a very important show in Las Vegas. So, I walk up to the table, and I don't have a gun license, so I can't even handle it. It depends. Uh, you can handle long guns anytime you want. You don't need a license for that. When you're talking about handguns, State of New York says without a pistol permit, you can't handle uh, be in possession of, of, of a modern handgun. Okay, and what are the best selling guns in merchandise? I would say today the merchandise is most popular are new handguns, uh, used, some used handguns, and some of the military replica rifles. Are the used uh, handguns and uh, antique guns shootable? Oh yeah, well, the people that are buying these, uh, these modern firearms are intending to use them, I'm sure. So they have to be functional. And uh, the ones that are not functional are ones that are antique that people uh, enjoy owning. But however, most of the uh, modern type firearms are used. Now let's get into uh, economics. Okay. How do you make your money from a gun shop? Commissions, vendor exhibition fees, commissions? There's a combination <coughs> of um, the revenue is a combination of the uh, dealers uh, paying to rent the tables and then the other part of the revenue is the income from the gate or the public. And, um, Yesterday was a great day. Yesterday was uh, spectacular. Yeah. What do you uh, What do you feel is the uh, um, um, let's see? You charge a very reasonable commission, thirteen bucks. And uh, do you, and people want to spend how much time? Do you think? I think the average person probably spends two hours in here. I would say that, uh, you know, depending, some people will be here all day, some people are in and out in an hour, but I'll bet uh, the average person is here for two hours. Now, you're responsible for doing the uh, National Incident Criminal Background Check, known as NICS. How does this work? Uh, actually, the uh, promoter is not responsible for that particular operation. However, the dealers uh, who have federal licenses are. And we are also responsible to make sure that uh, the proper thing is done at the show. And it's a very simple process where the uh, dealer calls into the national database, uh, which is uh, managed by the FBI, and he gets the background information of the person buying the uh, particular firearm. <clears throat> and as long as there is no problem on, on uh, the database, he can transfer the firearm. If there is a problem, he will not. Now, if the uh if I'm buying a long gun, I still have to go through the NICS. Every firearm made after 1898 must be subjected to a NICS check in the state of New York and in other states of the country as well. Now, one of the concerns about the gun show recent weeks in Westchester was about security. 
at gun shows. Now, how does security today compare to, to uh, security of yesterday when you first started the shows? Well, I'm not quite sure what that means. The security at the show in terms of not having guns stolen at the show, we're very careful about that. We have a procedure in place. Um, in terms of um, actually having a, fu a functioning firearm operated in the show, we prevent that by uh, putting a tie in every modern firearm that comes in the show, as well as all the dealers. So our security has been very, very strong in terms of safety, uh, rather than uh, rather than security of uh, being stolen. But we also we emphasize that. How can how can you practice shooting your gun? I would recommend not licensed. <clears throat> I recommend that anyone who wants to shoot a long gun, we go down to uh, Blue Mountain Preservation, which is a park run by the County of Westchester, and you can shoot long gun there, shotgun, skeet, and trap shooting, and uh, we have the authority shooting for rifles. You must also have a permit to to bring your handgun if you have. Mm -hmm. And now, are more women buying guns? Uh, yeah, I would say that women are definitely into this much more for self-protection purposes, <clears throat> more than shooting and more than target shooting and competition. However, guaranteed that the women will get into target shooting more in the future as we go along because they're beginning to get becoming buyers when they were before. What kind of fun is all? Well, I would say women are more primarily interested in the self-defense, so they would be in uh, purchasing handguns more than anything else. What's more, the long guns which are used for hunting and target shooting often don't fit women who are more slight of, of stature, and so I would say that they would do some of that, but it's difficult. Uh, finding a gun that fits their Shotguns and rifles don't fit women well. Right. Uh, now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to. Have very good, very good. Okay, so what would you like the viewers to know about gun shows? How they are run and their security? And their security? Um, what, I, I, a message to the. I think, I think the, the general population ought, ought to consider this <clears throat> that when we look at violence in this country, it's based on factors that have nothing to do with gun ownership. Gun ownership has been going up every year uh, considerably, and crime has been coming down. So gun shows are not a problem place. We do not distribute anything to the, to the underworld. We are legitimate as any other business is, and I welcome you to come and see it. Right. And what is the enduring appeal of firearms, historic uh, guns, memorabilia for the show audience over the years? Has it changed or not? I think that the um, perhaps it's changed a little bit in that most people are more interested in the modern than in the collectible antique. But the enduring interest in firearms began about 1775 and has continued. Uh, luckily, in our, our country, we have that freedom uh, and we hope to enjoy the future. Well, very good. Listen, thank you very much. And being on the program. John Bailey, people to be heard. Good night. There you have it. That was Newman Chittenden talking about his career in the gun show business, what gun shows are like. And um, as he was walking out, he mentioned to me a factor involving the emotions that arise whenever guns, gun ownership, and uh, gun violence is discussed, and that is fear. Mr. Chittenden said that fear is the factor. People are afraid of guns, and indicated that he felt that if people would go to gun shows and see the quality of people that attended these shows, how reasonably good-natured they were, uh, he described an assault of the earth types who were very honest. In fact, they had a lot of cash picked up and turned in at the office, uh, which he says uh, is really always surprises him. And he says they're basically honest, hardworking people who enjoy um, guns, hunting, whatever, as a hobby. And uh, 
it should be looked on more as a hobby. And he invites everyone to attend a gun show and find out for themselves the atmosphere of a gun show is and the really stringent uh, protections that are uh, put in place to uh, avoid any persons walking out with a handgun. There's also plenty of patrols in the parking lot around the county center. Uh, when these shows go on, uh, the state police are there, they have undercover folks there, and uh, the guns, as I had mentioned earlier, very uh, well protected. Now, there is some things going on that you should know about. The National Rifle Association is now doing surveys uh, to get people's reactions to very um, intriguing rollbacks of legislation that they would like to see the present administration enact. One of them is uh, not making persons with disabilities um, or mental problems um, checked for such problems or reported and made part of a database that was just recently passed uh, this week in the House and um, at the House in Washington. And they also want uniform gun laws across the country, one uniform gun law, essentially, and uh, which would mean that persons traveling from state to state with a gun would not be suddenly hit with very stringent, much more um, draconian gun laws, say, when they enter New York State, for example, which has very strong gun laws on that carrying weapons or carrying unregistered weapons. And this is something they are looking to for the new Congress to do. Now, another intriguing thing that is happening is this week we had uh, two um, well-known legislators, uh, uh, George Latimer and uh, Tom Amadanji, who is an assembly, assemblyman, George Latimer, who is a state senator, and they have declared that they are interested in exploring and running against the county executive. Now, uh, it was alluded to in the Journal News, news article about their uh, declaring that they were interested, that uh, they were exploring, and that the Democrats had to um, develop a answer to this Trumpism. However, based on what I saw, there is a lot of enthusiasm for gun shows. There are a lot of persons who like guns around Westchester County, and it makes me wonder really how resonant an anti-gun platform, should the uh, Democratic Party adopt it, would, uh, whether that would be effective, as you recall. In the last county executive election, the Democratic candidate lost because he was running on much of the national platforms for more gun control than being one of his main uh, uh, items. Now, that being said, it is I think it's imperative for persons to figure out exactly what guns actually do. It is Safety is paramount in handling a gun, and most persons who handle guns and who uh, are law-abiding citizens, have gun licenses, are very careful with their firearms, most. And uh, also, you can learn a lot about um, how to handle a gun, um, and one should, I think, learn about them, because the more you know, the more you understand that it has to really start with handling guns and, I might say, motor vehicles, for example, another uh, item that, uh, another practice driving, which would uh, results in a lot of deaths for people who do not handle them right. So, to my way of thinking, the uh, gun show is not a terrible thing at all. And uh, I felt uh, quite uh, comfortable 
with what I saw as far as safety measures going on at that gun show. And it is not a uh, something to be afraid of. So anyway, we want to thank uh, um, Newman Chittenden for being with us and explaining what a gun show is really like and how you are kept safe at a gun show. This is John Bailey saying good night for people to be heard.